Thanks, guys. Welcome to everyone. Okay, we'll, we'll start over. Uh, welcome to HeroQuest fans. Uh, we're not playing a game yet. We're playing a game like an hour from now because today we have a special guest. We're doing perhaps the first English video interview with a gentleman from the HeroQuest community known as Luca Pashi. And I guess he is the unofficial leader of the, I'm calling it the Lost Quest Packs project. And uh, go ahead, say a little bit about yourself and what this project is and, and uh, why we're so excited about it. Sure. Uh, I was uh, saying before, I'm not sure I'm the leader, but they say I am. I'm the, the public face of the project. So I guess I'm the team leader after all. Uh, it's a small team that is working on the Lost Quest Packs, uh, the, the drafts of the Wizard and the Dwarf Quest Pack that were to be released in the 90s. Uh, we found the, the drafts and we are working to bring back those packs uh, as close as possible to what you would have found in a shop in 1992, 1993. And uh, well, I don't know if everyone is excited about this, we are, and we really a, a job of passion, of love we are, we are doing, and uh, we hope, uh, especially after today, giving a chance to the fans to ask questions and to see what we are doing. We hope everyone will be excited just as much as we are about this project. Very cool. Well, we're glad to have you. And I, full disclosure for me, um, I've been a part of this for a while myself. I think ever since you brought it public, um, I've been sort of in the know, but out of respect for the fact that you guys wanted to kind of make this kind of a surprise, I kept quiet about most of the things, except a few things you let me say. And I know some other people, um, Amalgamash, um, HeroQuest Italia, Grog, those guys have talked up some of the things, again, that you uh, sort of trickled out there, put out there. But this uh, this is maybe not your, well, first of all, it's not an official thing. This is not endorsed by Hasbro or Avalon Hill or Games Workshop. And yet, this is not your typical fan project. This is not your usual, like, somebody decided to make some quests and put them out there for hero quest um tell us why this project maybe people are hearing about it for the first time how is this different than say like mount of the beast men or one of these other projects that people know about well i'd say that the main difference is that we are somewhere in between an official quest and some homemade stuff um so that what we are doing is based on the the drafts of the of the packs, and uh, some of them were pretty close to completion. So, uh, what we try to do uh, is to uh, fix the issues that were there. Like there are some things missing, or some things are not working uh, as they were um, as they were written. As uh, we know that these packs lack uh, a bit in the um play testing department so there are some things that are broken we, we try to fix those things uh keeping it as original as possible uh something that they want me to to, to say is that uh these are not the the best packs that we can make like something we can make with the knowledge we have right now about the game or the fixes that have been uh, created along the way in these past 30 years but it's something that should be as close as possible at, as to uh, the packs that you would have found in a shop in 1993 so we try to keep it as original as possible to do as little fixing as possible and keep everything as uh, as it could have been so the main difference i'd say is something as close as possible to the packs the original packs we could have uh, gotten back then. Uh, this is the main difference. Of course, there is a need to uh, do something original, like we don't have the art, mm. or we just have the four ups of the miniatures. And uh, of course, we, we can create the miniatures from those. We, we have to build them from scratch, but we try to keep it in line with the spirit and the, uh, the like the, the style the, uh, the the gameplay of the original hero quest so we feel like 
it's important as it's a way to bring back to the community something that was thought to be lost and uh, that we some of us have waited for like 30 years so it's finally time to to, to see it uh, how what the, the what's and the ifs and the what could have been about that we we only knew uh, some bits here and there but we never had the full uh, image we still don't have it because they're not finished but it's as close as we can get very nice well i have some questions for you that i kind of wrote out and actually a few questions that we gathered from other fans in the community and i just want to say to anyone who's listening or watching live if you have a question for luca about the project and you want to post it in the chat go right ahead we'll do our best to answer them all and if we don't get to some of them we'll, we'll still try to get an answer uh, as soon as we can we appreciate your participation so i'm gonna go kind of go back go back 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 because again somebody uh, may be hearing about this for the first time and not really quite understand exactly where it all fits together um you are uh, a fan of hero quest right you're not uh you don't work for Hasbro or anything like that. You're not an industry insider. You're just a guy <laughs> like us. Um, tell us, uh, what was your, just a brief uh, history of, of you and HeroQuest? Did you grow up with the game? Did you come in later? What was your experience? Uh, I think it's the same story of many of us. Like I uh, got it for Christmas back then with my brother. And um, actually, we didn't even play so much with it, but it just stood with me. It was amazing. The miniatures, the furniture, it always had a place in my heart, even if we didn't really play so much with that. But uh, uh, it always has been there like something special for me. Uh, maybe part because of the childhood memories, maybe just because it was a cool game. And uh, many, many years later, uh, almost 20, I think. Um, we just found it again and decided to play uh, during summer. And at some point I thought, okay, I just want to uh, get all the things, uh, Hero Quest, like also all the ones that we didn't have back then. I wanted a full collection. So I started getting stuff and uh, it sort of got out of hand but still uh, i managed to get a lot of stuff like all the original games and then i finished with the europeans uh, releases and i thought well uh, let's just get the american ones as well and so i started getting those uh, then there was i don't know the brazilian one or the japanese one i just got some hero quest fever i guess and uh, with all this buying and selling, I ended up getting some pretty rare uh, stuff, uh, even some uh, resin casts of the free ups from the original game, like uh, something that was uh, on display at Warhammer World and was just uh, getting thrown away, uh, as weird as it sounds. And uh, so I just kept getting more and more passionate and as i was uh, reading as, as i was studying all the different releases of course um i came to know that there was something else that was never released and uh, of course there's uh toko who uh, talked about that extensively on his site all the work he did to uh, understand to to find more about these packs and the uh, the art, the bits, the uh, designer of the packs, and like it was amazing. And I was very sad because I thought we would never see that, you know, that it was lost forever. Uh, then there was some more hope, as uh, you may know, mm -hmm. Restoration Games um, uh, hired uh, Mike Gray uh, and they made a a blog post about that they were in his basement and he had a box with uh, like unreleased hero quest expansions written on it and so we, we knew that they existed somewhere and uh, so we all hoped they would come out at some point and uh, well uh, amazingly they they ended up coming uh, up they they showed up and so well uh, i couldn't miss the chance that, that's the story of how it started 
Wow. And for those who uh, don't know some of the names we're dropping, so Mike Gray, we have discovered. So many people know the name of Stephen Baker, the first uh, designer, writer, some call him the inventor. Of course, he didn't act alone of HeroQuest in 1989. But Mike Gray was the, I forget his official title, but he was like the leader of the North American team yep. that converted HeroQuest <laughs> in 1990. He was in charge of the hero quest and the uh, not the battle master, but uh, it's the other line of your of Hasbro's games. Uh, the name doesn't come to me, but still, he was like a very important um, uh, director at Hasbro. He was in charge of the hero quest line, and he's basically the one who uh, converted the European version to the American one. So he was in charge of deciding how the things would go. He had a uh, long past at TSR as um, as a designer as well. So he's very, I mean, he was very talented. He's very talented. And um, he was in charge of creating the North American quest packs as well. Mm, the Elven um, and the Barbarian. From the, the and, yeah. and, and the Dwarf and the Wizard uh, as... Uh, as we later uh, came to understand, he, he was basically the team leader of the designers and uh, he was the one uh, having final decisions about uh, what HeroQuest would be, uh, would become the, the content of the expansion and so on. So he, he basically was the leader of the team, of the North American team, and so uh, he, he had most of the the bits left about the development of the expansions and when you say three and four ups i mean i know what that means and i know taco um his website he has shown pictures for years of these models and sketches from the dwarf and wizard quest packs that we never got so um i guess uh, we don't want to bog down the entire interview with talk of that but a three up is what three times bigger than the miniature that you get in the finished game yeah basically uh, what is done is that uh, the sculpts for the miniature are not made in the smaller scale that is the fine scale but they're made with bigger models either three or four times bigger than the final uh, miniature and uh, those were created back then and uh, I think Sky Knight uh, has them right now most of them right now for the North American Quest uh, expansions, and he uh, right when I was about to find the, the drafts, he actually showed them to the world for the first time. Uh, so, like every bit was uh, getting there. Uh, it was time for this pack to be known, to be uh, to, to, to came out to light. So um, we we know what would have been created. We will. We would later find out that's because the miniatures were the uh, part that would require the most work, uh, the longest time to prepare. So they were the first thing that would be created in a new quest pack. So the designers were asked to submit the monsters uh, first. So there would be time to sculpt the miniatures and to create the four ups. Uh, the other parts could come even a bit later. It was not a big issue, but that had to be made first. So we had those because the four packs uh, were um, meant to be released all together. So the work on the four packs uh, was just uh, um, uh, going up at the same time. And so we have all the four ups because they were sculpted already for all the packs, even if some were released in the end, some were just not released in the end. Very nice. Well, I think the biggest question that I would have if, if I had never heard this before is how in the world, if you can say, did you get your hands on these documents? These Because we're not talking about just those pictures that Toka had on his website. Or Taco, I always say his name wrong. Um, because people have made like fan versions of those sculpts, which I know have nothing to do with your project. But how did you get those documents? And can you tell us about like what's in them? 
Yeah, well, as uh, as weird as it may sound, uh, the answer to this is eBay, and uh, so <laughs> a person that was uh, involved in the project actually was clearing his house of all these and other game parts he had, and uh, he just put them up online and. Uh, it was a time when I was like uh, doing a lot of collecting, so I was like checking uh, regularly eBay, and these four auctions came up. And I was at first I was not even sure what they were. There's always someone who's saying he has some exclusive stuff, some rare stuff, and then it's not what it's meant to be. Yeah. Yeah, it's fake or it's just, you know, uh, Xerox copies of a quest book a kid made and he says that it's some um, uh, very rare, never seen before hero quest stuff. Uh, and uh, it, it, it kind of fit the bill this time as well. And it was mostly uh, handwritten things and copies and stuff like that. Uh, but I just thought about taking a closer look. So I just uh, looked at the pictures and uh, I looked at the description. And the thing that really made me realize that it could be real is that there was a bit of the uh, dwarf quest pack draft. And uh, you could see the monsters uh, contained inside the pack. You know, at the beginning of the quest book, it's usually written the content of the pack. And so the monsters are there. And reading those and knowing what the four ups were, they just made sense. Like we, we had these creatures, we didn't even know the names or what they could have been, but they just were matching. And so that was amazing. And I thought, okay, we didn't even know of the four ups, which was in which pack. And in this case, it just made sense. There was a, like a link between them. So I realized they were real. Uh, there were four actions as the four packs were being sold uh, um, as uh, each on his own. And uh, so when I realized what they were, I just wrote to the guy and I uh, asked if it would be possible to just buy them up and uh, right away all for them together. Uh, as uh, my main concern was that they could have ended up in someone's collection and no one would have ever known what the content was. And uh, so we, there was a bit of a back and forth. I had to wake up like at three in the morning to answer him uh, because there's a uh, time difference between Italy and the US. And so it was a few, a few tiring days uh, to, to, to keep the conversation going. But then we did reach an agreement and he said there was another person that was interested and he would just uh, upload uh, a new auction for the four packs and who, we, whoever got there first could just buy it. Uh, lucky for me, I just uh, read the message, I think, seconds after he, he wrote that, like, it's up, uh, so if you want to buy it, just, just go for it. And, uh, of course, I was checking my phone like a madman in these days because I couldn't really miss the chance. And uh, so I went and bought it and uh, I was still not completely sure it was the real thing. But, yeah, then it turned out to be the real thing. So it's amazing to think that after 30 years, you just randomly uh, fall into this thing. But still, that, that's how it worked. Very good. And I can vouch for what I've seen. It's, yeah, it's 100% real. And it's, yeah, yeah. It, to me, I'm very, I was very interested when you first brought this up to a small group of people, the, the drafts for the Barbarian mm -hmm. Quest Pack and the Elf Quest Pack, because Avalon Hill was making their remakes of it. And we were talking about, well, these were expansions that at the time they were released, they felt very unbalanced, very, the difficulty was too extreme. And I wondered, well, were they going to continue to play test and refine it and they just didn't get time? And my reading of the notes kind of led me to believe that that was indeed the case, that things were very rushed and shut down. And not only did we not get the, the complete four heroes, you know, the, the wizard and dwarf quest packs, but also the barbarian and elf packs were kind of 
just kind of dashed off and sent to sent out there with not a lot of refinement. So yeah, yeah. I think also reading the the drafts, you can see that in some cases they just forgot about oh, yeah. uh, things. Uh, so like the uh, Yeti hug and uh, that that's how it works and it, it was just missing from uh, one revision to of the quest pack to the other and so well we get uh, a, a killer hug <laughs> that had a chance to you, you had a chance to get, get free from that in the first or the second draft but from the third revision up okay it's not possible to save yourself anymore and so this is also interesting you know i think one of the most interesting part is also to see how the development process went uh, the, the historical value of the the dress to see uh, what it was to to find out how they developed the pack and this is also something that we managed to get from the dress so we in some cases we have exact dates uh, like the, the deadlines when the authors had to send the, the quest packs in or we have a general knowledge of how long it took to get it from uh, the first draft to the final draft to the production uh, who was involved uh, I think that's also very very interesting uh, as, uh, as a fan uh, as uh, someone interested in you know the world the quest making and that, that's also very very interesting I think also the ideas that didn't make the final cut or uh, some silly things that they were written and, and then they, they never uh, ended up doing and whatever else yeah, thanks. Thanks, Ruby. I appreciate that. So um, I could probably spend hours and I have talking about the things that were left out because when Avalon Hill remade the Frozen Horror, I was thinking, I wonder if they'll put some of those new things in, but they did not. <laughs> but when I was playing it with our group, I took some of those things that I had learned from the drafts and put them in. Like you mentioned, the Yeti hug, you could break it by rolling two combat dice and I always quote it wrong but because I changed it slightly but uh, if you rolled uh, one white shield you didn't take damage if you rolled two white shields you broke out of it but in the end they just made it so you just get hugged and there's nothing you can do someone else has to save you Avalon Hill had their own solution later into the Northlands they gave us things but I guess um, I'm going to start showing some pictures but I wanted you to kind of comment on the fact that Hasbro still has these documents, even though you've made copies uh, from this person who was selling them. And I remember and Carmen more than a year ago told us we have everything. So they could theoretically release this stuff, but what is your take on why they haven't just taken advantage and released it themselves? Like, and have we seen any of it come out in other ways? Uh, well, I don't have an official reason, of course. Uh, they may still release something. I think it is interesting the other answers you got, I think, from Dad, uh, that they were not feeling obliged to release those packs uh, to the fans. It's sort of like they never existed, so we don't feel like we, we have to release those. Uh, we feel like we have to give back the barbarian or the elf because they are out there but we don't feel like we have to do the same thing uh, i think the main reason could be that they were uh, maybe old content so maybe also the dynamics were not very up to date uh, compared to what a designer could write in 2021 two, three. Um, I think part is that that's work that comes from a different team and so maybe they at Avalon Hill they want to do their own thing so they want to work with their team and release something that they made not just fix something that someone else made um, I think this could be the main reasons uh, I personally I think they they won't release it, it seems like the uh, intention right now is not to make he, um, hero specific uh, packs but more just like general packs uh, this is also I think a strong reason that maybe made them realize that they didn't want to release something just for the wizard or just for the dwarf 
they just want quests that you can play with any hero and uh, i think that that's the main reason uh, i'd say it's probably the reasoning behind it then i don't know maybe tomorrow they'll just uh, release a wizard quest pack and uh, who knows the other thing is that i think uh, from my point of view i think they picked something from the dress and they took it to the uh 20 first century i guess um because there are some things that are seems a bit too similar to what you can uh, read in the drafts uh, something we've seen into the northlands is the animal companion there is something like that in the in these packs or some names or some uh, general uh, themes seems to be recording so I think they just sort of picked the the things they felt were good in the dress and they just put it into some new work. I I think I agree with you a lot, especially my interviews with Chris Nato back when he was still with Avalon Hill and we miss him <laughs> talking about how yeah, you have the combination of there isn't nostalgia for these. I mean, we're super interested, but the general public just had the vague idea, well, someday there'll be a dwarf pack and a wizard pack, and we just never got them. I know some people tried to reason and say, well, maybe the, the witch, Return of the Witch Lord is really the wizard pack, and maybe Keller is the not. dwarf it's not. pack. No, it's not. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we just, we just didn't have that. So lack of nostalgia and the fact that, I mean, I was one of the people who complained heavily about uh, the Frozen Horror. I mean, I wanted to see it remade, but I also was concerned that people were going to play this for the first time and go, this was what everybody was waiting for for 30 years. Like I, I spent, you know, thousands on this for eBay and it was, I was killed in the first quest and I had no chance. <laughs> like if I were a kid and I had gotten that pack, I would have been very frustrated. Um, and just, I'll just say this, this is not me trying to spoil anything, but the Dwarf Quest pack is even worse. Like it, it looks like the hardest hero quest any was anyone has ever made. <laughs> yeah, probably there are like a few monsters. I think we can say that there are at least the ogres uh, from the Hogger Horde. They just uh, used some of the assets from the European expansions. In the Elf pack, we get the ogre warriors. In the Dwarf quest pack, we would have the other three uh, chief ten uh, ogres and. They are kind of badass, so of course, yeah, it would have been probably worse. And uh, we, we we did some calculation also on the supposed difficulty of, of the packs. So, yeah, they wouldn't have been much easier probably. Then we, we don't know if that's the final version we, we would have gotten or if they would have changed something, but still. Yeah. I think the nerfing of the Ogres in the Ogre Horde remake uh, just uh, reminds us that they were terrible foes to, to, to fight with. So probably, yeah, it would have been very, very fun. It would have been a bit frustrating. Um, as much as we know about it, um, probably there was not a lot of playtesting of the packs after the first uh, or second draft so that's probably part of the reason why uh, they look very very difficult like there are some rooms in the barbarian or the elf pack that i don't know look like uh, uh, a subway train in the peak hour it's just monsters everywhere there's almost no room for the heroes so uh, that that's a way to make it a bit frustrating we, we didn't want to do something like that we tried uh, to, to to balance the the challenge to make it difficult uh, to make you use uh, your abilities, but not to make it so frustrating that you just want to burn the expansion because it's just too difficult. Uh, it's it's not fun. It's not what uh, the game is supposed to be. It's supposed to be challenging, but you should be able to uh, to beat it to to, to go on with it. So. Oh yes. Well, and I think. To me, there's sort of two maybe competing values. One is the preservation of the history of the development. Like, I'm interested in that for its own sake. I would love to see a scrapbook release that just has everything like, this is what draft one looked like. This is what draft two looked like. But what you're saying is, and I don't get the impression that you are arrogantly saying, oh, I can I can do better than what these professional game designers did. You see instead the trajectory of what they would have done 
if they'd had more time because it looked like they were going to make the frozen horror more playable, more interesting for players, less frustrating. And they probably would have done the same for these others if they'd had more time. Uh, let me give you an example. So I see that you have this really cool autograph from Catherine L. Connors, the yep. writer, the original writer of the quest for the Mage of the Mirror, okay. Elf Quest Pack. And I was looking at the draft yep. for her quests, and the original versions were much more difficult than the one that we got in 1992. Like we're talking about multiple ogres like in the first solo quests, <laughs> they were downgraded to familiar. So uh, there was already a process by which they were like lowering the difficulty, but they just didn't have time to get there. So yeah. I guess uh, more of a comment than a question, but go ahead and respond to it. Yeah, I think that um, the problem is that I'm probably towards the end, the development was quite rushed for the last two packs. And the interesting thing is that we think we, we made out that um, the Wizard Quest Pack was actually the first one they started to work with, like with the final version. And then the Barbarian and the Elf sort of uh, moved faster and uh, ended up being released. But the Wizard Quest Pack in the end was pretty close to completion. Um, so that they kept trying to to fix it there was a lot of back and forth and uh, probably yeah if they had enough time they would have done something different uh, they would have tested it more it's just that they had an almost finished product they probably knew uh, there was not not much time left to release it if they wanted to and so they sort of just released it like it was and uh, that, that's a shame but still uh, it's what we have to deal with uh, 30 years after the fact, so uh, it's sort of like this. Very nice. Well, uh, as we're as our time is is fleeting, um, I'm going to display some more of these images, ask for your comments. I think some of it we've already talked about, and then we'll get to these questions from the fans. So thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I'm going to throw this image on the screen. Uh, Hispazargon, who is in the chat, has done a lot of these uh, calculations. He attempts to sort of encapsulate the general difficulty of these different expansions. And based on what you guys have been working on on Yield In, on the forum, the secret forum, the Sinister Sorcerers, the name of the Wizard Quest pack, looks like it's the easiest of these four. Uh, I've always said the Frozen Horror is the hardest, and he seems to agree with that. And Mage of the Mirror is pretty close, especially towards the end. The Hammer of Hadrica, which is a name people probably who visit Ash Quest a lot have heard. That's the Dwarf Pack. Looks like it's somewhere in the middle. Um, I guess that contradicts what I said earlier while I was saying it was worse. <laughs> but I suppose maybe something I was thinking, and you can tell me what you think of this, it's almost as if these quest packs were written for people who had played every single quest already and had kept their same heroes all this time. So they have like tens of thousands of gold coins and so many potions. So the heroes are almost unstoppable. So it's almost like they increase the difficulty to match. Forgetting, of course, like Doug Hopkins would say, that not everybody plays that way. Some people were just going to jump right into this expansion and just be blown away, <laughs> right? So maybe say yeah, something about the difficulty, yeah. yeah. Sure. Uh, I think there are some comments on the drafts about how the heroes uh, are sitting on a stash of gold and they have to find ways to, to spend it somehow. Uh, so yeah, I think they were designed with uh, sort of an end game uh, in their mind, so they had to be difficult. And uh, about the difficulty level, of course, it was... Uh, it's an estimation based on uh, an algorithm that Hispa has. I don't know much about that. He's just sort of this amazing scholar about HeroQuest. He knows everything. He just uh, does a lot of strange stuff, but it just works. And uh, so we, we did some calculations to know uh, where we could fit the, um, the expansion. Um, knowing that the frozen horror and the mage of the mirror are very hard uh, quest books we felt like uh, we will need sort of a, 
of a stair. Uh, we, we had to have something coming first. We thought uh, the wizard quest pack was a good uh, match because uh, it would also increase the power of the wizard. So it would make the later quest easier for the whole group. Uh, as um, I think in these two quest packs, the two that were released, the fact that the uh, the, the other heroes don't have many uh, many new powers, they are just stuck with the good old um, spells. It sort of makes things more difficult and also probably less enjoyable for a wizard. So we thought. Okay, the since the sorcerers can be the first uh, step, so we can have a more powerful wizard that can help the group uh, having uh, an easier time with the more difficult challenges. So we thought that okay, the last uh, double quest can be a bit harder. Of course, uh, it has to be a challenge, but we can get there. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be super hard or solo quests that are impossible to pass because that would just be frustrating, I guess. So it's an estimate, but we feel like it's probably a, a good estimate of how the game will play in the end. But just so everyone knows, there's a lot of work, a lot of research going on in the pack. Uh, in the release of the pack, not just uh, you know making a nice quest with nice uh, characters and whatever else, but uh, we kind of thought about every little thing. Uh, we are trying to iron everything out, make sure that we have the, the best pack uh, possible. And the good thing is that I'm sort of a perfectionist myself, but I uh, ended up being in a group of perfectionists that are worse than me. So um, we, we ended up doing some crazy stuff just to make it look like a pack that would have been released in 1993, uh, just to make sure that everything is as, as perfect as possible. This, unfortunately, takes time. And so it's, uh, we, we moved a bit slower than we originally thought we, we could move. We, we are sorry about this, but it's a small team and we do this on our free time. And uh, just to give an idea, we just uh, finished a play testing session of like 50 hours or something like that. And so th that th everything takes a lot of time. Uh, it's, it's a work of love, but usually a work of love takes a long time to make because you just want to make it perfect, as perfect as possible. It won't be perfect in the end, but we're still trying for that. Well, the best thing about HeroQuest is the fact that once uh, people have access to this, they can just change it. And if they feel they have a better solution than you, they'll just do it. <laughs> yeah, of course. We, we also try to leave some space for the Zargons out there. So if they want to decide on some rules in a different way, that they have room to do that. So we feel like mm -hmm. it's a good way to uh, keep, uh, to stay true to, to the nature of HeroQuest, where the uh, game master is is the, the game master so he can really decide about anything in game uh still to do something that was uh closer to the the original text so yeah oh i showed that too soon uh yeah so that leads to the next big question so the now it's t now it's time to grill you and put you on the hot seat <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so i can imagine the question in everyone's mind is i feel like there is a temptation when you're doing a passion project like this to say, look at all the sacrifice I'm making. Look at all the hard work I'm doing. I'm spending money out of my own pocket to make this dream come true. And I deserve a little bit of money back from this. So what is going to be the way that you're going to protect yourselves from the fact that couldn't Hasbro just swoop in and say, you guys all need to cease and desist. This is, you do not own this property. This is not an official product. We're going to do our own thing and we're going to shut you all down. Like, how do you stop that from happening how do you protect yourself from people who would say oh you're just going to go sell this on etsy and make a whole bunch of money under the table <laughs> well uh, i don't know i mean i don't think we can protect ourselves from that if hasbro just wants to send uh, ninja killers to our homes and uh, destroy us i guess they can and uh, the thing is that we we always thought about this about this as a passion project so uh, we want to release it free of charge and it will be freely downloadable uh, by anyone. Anyone can make 
uh, their own uh, copy of the pack. And uh, we did put a lot of time and money uh, in this, but we feel like uh, we are good with that. Uh, we sort of thought it was one of the possible outcomes. And uh, we actually feel like we don't want someone else to cash on our effort or on the property of Iroquois. So th the good thing is that all the art is original and uh, so the card arts or the, uh, the miniatures themselves. So if someone has uh, the idea of uh, using it and selling it and profiting off of it, if Hasbro doesn't do anything, we can still do something as we we still own the property of the art so we can decide to release it for personal use but of course uh, no one can profit off of that uh, i think this is also a good way to show the our feelings our, our good faith then it's up to Hasbro to decide if they can or they want to do something we can stop that but of course it won't stop uh the, the the, the work we had and also because we, we have playtesting copies so at least there are three or four wizard quest packs uh, oh, yeah. around the world right now so we, we can just play with that we, we we'll find a way to Private. for everyone to have it yeah very nice yeah well and i suppose let's say hasbro did decide oh yes all all the hero quest packs are now out they are still making they'll be making their own creative completions that may be different than what the fans do so there would still be a uniqueness to what you guys are doing you make choice a they made choice b right yeah of course uh, there are some gaps to fill so of course we may feel it differently uh, as you said we are not probably as good as hasbro's game designers they might just want to do something different there are rules that work well with the 1992 edition but they were changed for the 2021 edition so mm -hmm. there would be some rule fixing to do in that case and i think they st can still release anything they want uh, similar different from the original drafts no problem and of course it would be official uh, hero quest uh, stuff so people would just buy it probably they would sell m much more than what we could ever do so yeah. th they're still free to do what they want of course of course they have the legal right yeah and i i suppose yeah. hasbro's goal is to make a profit so they would create something that they knew would sell whereas what you guys are doing is you are trying to preserve and then continue in the spirit of something that could have existed uh, 30 years ago <laughs> so it's it's quite yeah. a different kind of goal yeah it's uh, so, sort of uh, like uh, hi historical archaeological preservation somehow and uh, to give back to the community something that was thought to be lost of course there's no uh, intention to cash out on this also because i think it would be uh, sort of hard to do that so we we're, it's not something that we want to do yeah, let's uh, let's look at these photos, and then I'm going to get to your questions, uh, everyone in the audience. Yeah. There. So, I see this image on the screen. This is from uh, Toka or Taco's website, um, where I forget what the name of his website. I'm so sorry, but this is one of these this, three, three ups or four ups versus. Yeah, th this is the free up of the uh, Minotaur. Uh, it's taken from Lesto Dante's site. Um, Lesto Dante, yeah. How could I forget? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. But, uh, yeah. You know, then he, then he gets angry. He's another one on the project. So, yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, that's, that's what his face looks like right now. So, it's coming, yeah. Coming yeah. Coming sort of like, like the Minotaur or the, the Gargoyle. And um, so, that is one of the free ups. Um, we had to make, of course, a, a model for the Minotaur. We thought that, that we would make it as close as possible, but there were parts that we didn't like, especially the face. Uh, as probably everyone knows, the uh, sculpts for the North American expansions were not made by Games Workshop, but we feel that the style, uh, that the Games Workshop style, the 80s style, 80s, 90s style of the miniature is something that is very, very important for HeroQuest. So what we did in this case it was to build the same model but just with a more 
uh, games workshop esque face, let's say. So more in line with the miniatures, Games Workshop released in the in the early nineties, and uh, so we feel like we managed to get a model that really feels like it's from the game. It's from nineteen ninety two. You can see that it fits uh, perfectly with the gargoyle. So. Um, we, we, we allowed ourselves to try and make these uh, small changes, not on every model, just those that we felt were not uh, that great. Um, but uh, we even tried to create the model so that it's possible to do some injection molding with them. So we would like to be able to have not 3D prints, but uh, injection molds so you you would find them just as it could have been in 1992 uh, 1993 you have to take them off the sprues i don't know if we'll manage to do this but uh, this is just to give an idea to, to all the fans on how how hard working uh, we we are to make things just as they could have been back then we, we just really want to bring back that feel uh, finding a box and just see how it, it could have been 1993. This is another example, the, the Rat Man. It also had a face that we didn't really like. We felt like it was not very uh, rat-like uh, and uh, it was a bit cartoonish, we felt. So it's another instance where we changed the head so that it, it would have a better uh, feeling, a better uh, Games Workshops uh, feeling. I hope Games Workshop is not going to sue us for this, but still. Um, it would fit better in with, with the, all, all the other miniatures. We were lucky enough in this case. Uh, we uh, found an Italian uh, artist who does uh, make sculpts in uh, games workshop style and he, he made us made them for us and uh, actually just to show how how big the love for hero quest is he, he actually didn't want to get paid we told him about the project and he was like okay i'm on board i'll make the uh, the models for you uh, i just want uh, a box of the old hero quest as as a payment and so we were happy to, to be able to get away with uh, such price as you would have to pay a lot to make these models uh, professionally made and um, he, he was also very on board with the idea that we would release the model for the uh, for prints and uh, it's something that he really 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 liked so this is also something that we feel is uh, is important to say the models also will be available for download uh, for those who want to print them very good. Yeah, STL models for printing. Because, yes, if you just have the rules on paper, you could buy any figure and print. Yeah, sure. Yep. But having something that is not a copy of what they actually created, but something inspired by that you could imagine existing in that era, you know, with the aesthetic of the 1990s game rather than the remake game, I think that's that was a great decision. And that would be another area of difference if hasbro were to release it themselves today it would be based on the modern design and art and everything yep. of of hero quest rather than the the 30 year old version yes uh, this is your showing is one of the models that we, we have never uh showed to anyone uh it's uh the saber tooth snow tiger uh, it's part of the wizard pack. This is a 3D print painted in uh, in blue, of course. Uh, we are still in the prototyping phase. Uh, this is the model. We we try to remake something that looks like the free up, but it still has its own perks. It still has its own uh, character. We feel like it blends in perfectly with uh, what we have seen. Uh, it's interesting because this uh, miniature here in the um, in the game in the quest is called Fang, and uh, so it makes it easy to understand why we say they probably picked something for the new quests. As in the Jungle of Dead Trap, we have sort of tigers that are saber fangs, and so when we saw it, we were like, mm, okay, uh, they, they probably like took something from there. 
like they they got inspired they thought it was it was something they could use uh, and even in the newer packs so there are these little things that make us think yeah they they they, they took something but for anyone who who was asking uh, the uh, the jungle of Del truck it, it's not the same thing as the dwarf quest pack that they're actually very different story wise the the mechanics it's it's very different oh man i i could do a whole we almost could do a second interview with all the things i want to say about this i feel like yes there are some things in jungles of deltrak that i think are clearly drawn as inspiration from the lost quest packs and there there's some things i've seen in first light that also remind me of some things in the drafts but so far they haven't like recreated that whole story like my whole thought is my guess is if they were going to do a dwarf, a dwarf quest pack officially other than the theme it would be completely original it would be not based on this old template of what we've seen. I mean, if you look at Mage of the Mirror, Frozen Horror, that was the template they were using. You got the three solo quests for the character. You've got the four alchemist potions, three of which are only for one character. You've got special yeah, final artifact. double quest. Yeah, the final double quest. You got the special artifact that raises your body points by two and your mind points by one. So it's it's as if they were wanting kids to buy those four packs together and make the four like ultimate versions of those heroes and they would play these extremely hard quests together. But maybe that's not what Avalon Hill wants to do today unless they think that's what all the fans are going to buy, in which case maybe yeah. they would. <laughs> um okay, let's uh so this other picture here, I thought this was interesting just as a rule mechanic. Um, this shows that there is quite a bit of difference between Saber Fang and Fang. Yeah. <laughs> With the and it's also interesting because it shows what the idea for multiple attacks uh, was back then. Mm -hmm. uh, then it was never uh, made very clear in the rules. And then Havalon Hill had a different idea. But this is an example of... The things that they were thinking in 1992, 1993, how it turned out to be. So, like, we um, included this rule in the Wizard Quest pack as we felt it was more in line with the original thoughts and also to sort of make it different compared to what you could find in 2023. So, maybe it's not the best rule, but it's probably the rule they would have chosen back then. And so, we are deciding to go with that. Uh, it's not as I said, the best pack ever, but it's probably the closest as the pack you could have found in 1993, with all the goods and bads this decision can have. And of course, as you said, uh, when the assets are out there, then anyone can decide to just make their own pack, change the rules, uh, as always with your quest. Oh, yes. And let it be known these are mock-ups these images you're seeing i mean yes the elf and barbarian pack yes show, but I, I, mean, really, yeah. I like it i like it though it's made to look like almost as if it could have really existed yep uh, this is the idea <laughs> these are mock-ups and they want me to say they have been made with the home printer so of course the colors are a bit off for Whatever else, they were still an early uh, example, but still can give you an idea of uh, why we say that we just want to make it as close as possible to um, a pack release back then. Uh, we feel like uh, it, it really looks, uh, it really fits the part. And um, so, yeah, th that's the idea. Yeah, and yeah, so even though it says Milton Bradley Games Workshop, that that's fake. That's just to make it remind you of... That's the fake. Old. It's just, yeah, the old flyer that was in the uh, um, in the packs, you know. I thought it would be uh, fun to sort of uh, make a, a different one uh, in a what-if kind of scenario, you know. Uh, maybe you just open a box and you find there's... A wizard quest pack flyer that just uh, yeah. was printed and no one uh, knew about so i think it was fun to just make something like this of course it's not made it's not official it's not made by uh milton bradley uh, the miniatures are not from games workshop but still they are made to be as close as possible to to those and uh, i think 
uh, you know, a fan can see this and, and really get excited about yeah. what what uh, he, he could get in there, what, what's in there. It's very interesting. Yeah, but sometime you see someone on Etsy or eBay selling something like this, just keep in mind they're scamming yeah. you, sadly. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and we hope that they won't do, but we have the means to sort of take down if they do, we hope at least. So uh, we try to protect everyone, uh, letting everyone know that it's like it's not an official release and uh, you can have it uh, for free. You can just download it and print it at home. Um, this is another example of how the cards look like. Uh, we try to make them look as close as possible to their counterparts. Uh, we feel like the general feeling is very, very close, not just the uh, layout, but also the images. And uh, so I don't know, what, what can I say? It's just, wow, they're, they're amazing. Uh, everyone must like them. So. Yep. Yeah, the poor wizard, he was supposed to save his gold for future expansions where he'd have powerful magical items. and. We never yeah, and the, the, he never got them. The fun part is that the powerful magical stuff he finds, he doesn't even have to pay for that. So yeah, uh, he's just sitting on a pile of gold and he just buys potions, I guess, but still. <laughs> yeah, good old wizard. Um, so yeah, we're getting into questions. I think one burning question that people have is, I know it was saying 2024. Is that uh, yeah. subject to change? Because you mentioned the perfectionism and the... The fact that it'll still, never never still, get finished. Yeah. No, not a fact, but <laughs> is it going to come out there? Uh, yeah. Can you say? It's an ongoing effort, and uh, it took much longer than we thought, so we, we won't give any fixed date. Uh, but we are hopefully in the final playtesting phases. We are fixing everything up, so I hope, hope that by the end of this year we have... Uh, fixed most of it so we can be almost ready for release uh, we'll just have to see but hopefully we are still uh pr pretty close to the date so if it's not 2024 i hope early 2025 we'll be able to uh, to get there were you guys uh, delaying ever on purpose because you were afraid maybe hasbro would release these or announce that they were released? Mm -hmm. No, no, not really. We just went ahead. And we it just takes a long, a long time. Also, because some things we can make them on our own. Uh, some others we had to hire people and pay them. Uh, in some other cases, they were not paid, but they took a long time to do their thing. So uh, we we sort of had to uh, put everything together. Like I'm editing the quest books because I know how to do that. So. Uh, I spent I don't know how many hours working on this, uh, but like for the uh, miniatures, no one uh, knew how to sculpt in our small group, so we had to resort to someone else I or the artist. And... <laughs> yeah, uh, so that that's the problem. It's always hard to find someone who can work for free, and if they work for free, you can't really uh, put pressure on them to just give everything to you in a few weeks and so we just had to go this way but of course if there is someone who can help feels like helping um like if there is some artist some someone able to sculpt miniatures with that style they want to drop a message to us we, we're just here to just do that please okay very good um a couple more things let's see so as far as when we'll be able to play it, just kind of when it's done, as often is the answer for these fan projects. So the Wizard Quest Pack is what we're talking about that may be coming yep. out soon and maybe much longer for the Dwarf Pack. Cause my I hope not much longer. Uh -huh. uh, the good thing is that we hope to uh, have learned something from finishing the development on the Wizard Quest Pack. So maybe it just won't take as long and we can just start with play testing right away so we can have uh, more finished quests when we are about to, to end it, to finish it. Well, we had to play test all together at the end right now with the Wizard Quest Pack. We'll see. Oh, yes. Yep. 
Okay. Well, uh, this has been great. Um, let's get to those questions because I've got to. I'll have to take a little break before the stream begins because we've uh, been going sure. strong here, and I really appreciate your time. And like I said, we could definitely have a second one if if you had time. Um, yeah, sure. If the, if the, they want it, I'm I'm ready. <laughs> great. Great. Okay, so a couple questions. Uh, so Lierlek asked this a while back. Um, he says, the direction they decided to go on the new wizard spells. Did they A, introduce new spells, B, keep the same elemental spell groups, but add new additional spells for each group? And do the new spells allow the wizard to carry more than nine spells per quest, but of the same approximate power levels as the original 12? Or... I know this is a long question. Still limited to nine spells, but with access to more spells than his original selections. And he says, basically, I want to know if the wizard has been upgraded with this pack, but if he has, did they fall into the classic issue of linear wizards or quadratic wizards or linear warriors or quadratic wizards that many games fall prey to? I know that's... I have no idea what, what quadratic wizards and warriors are, but still... I'm, I'm gonna try to answer um, I think I have an the answer. idea. I, I don't, but I still answer. Then, then you can say if it's a quadratic <laughs> wizard or not. And uh, yes. So uh, the, the idea was to well, the, the the authors were left quite free in deciding how they wanted to deal with the uh, with the spells. If they wanted to create new classes or if they wanted to keep the same classes but new spells. Uh, in the case of the wizard, uh, we have the same classes as the basic hero class. So the four elemental spells, uh, the wizard just gets more choice, some new, very, very powerful spells. And uh, let's say, I, I can't say too much, of course, we want to leave some some surprises, but the wizard will be able to uh, pick and carry more of his stuff. So he's going to be a bigger upgrade for, for the wizard. And uh, every wizard will want to have the pack and use it to play, as it will be able to um, increase the, uh, the, the outcomes. Uh, it will give you more. Uh, it will be more exciting. It's, it's going to be interesting, really. Nice. And I see the, the physical objects being created to do the play tests adds that extra layer of realism. Um, yeah, actually, the, the, there is a picture that I'm trying to show. Then you tell me if it shows up that I didn't have time to, to, to show you. But uh, I think it's going to be super exciting for everyone to see. It, so uh, something brand new. Excellent. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, let's see if it works. Can you see it? Ooh. Ah, yes, we do see it. And uh, so th these are, of course, they're still mock-ups. It's not the final, uh, uh, the final pack, but still, it has. <laughs> All of the content that the final pack is supposed to have, and you can see it, it really feels like uh, an original pack uh, of the days gone. So very nice. Yeah, I see a lot of things that remind me of Wizards of Morcar in there. Um, yeah, of course, uh, some assets were supposed to be reused, of course, as the art is the part that it's a bit more expensive. Uh, of course, Hasbro wanted to use the same assets uh, again, if possible. So oh, yes. there are some things that uh, come back, let's say. Not every fan out there, though, has everything <laughs> to be able to just grab those pieces yes. when they're called for. So they may end up using something else. But if yeah, they, 3D prints are available of something similar, that certainly helps. Yeah, yeah. They will be included anyway. So if they have to use it, they'll, it's, it's going to be there. Very nice. I, I even like the fact that the choice of uh, making the figures blue again. And are those wizards, are they dark gray or are they dark blue? What color are they in that picture? They are dark gray. Uh, we are afraid the final version might, ha might be all gray miniatures, though, because having colors with injection molding would be uh, super expensive. We, we don't know if we can deal with that. So... 
uh, but as they say on the box, the color may vary. So <laughs> we are yeah. just uh, fitting. So it's, it's just fine like that. Children of the 80s and 90s know exactly what that means. I, I, I are used to that. So yeah, it's cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's uh, let's do a lightning round through the questions here. Uh, yeah. So let's see. Time travel back to the 90s. Steve RS says, I'm really excited about this that it will be released as a fan-made expansion. He was asking, well, he says, hopefully it'll be size compatible with 2021 HeroQuest board. I don't think there's any worry there, is there? I mean, I know there's a slight scale difference between the size of the squares, but I mean, once you put a tile down, you, you can tell what it is. It's not going to break anything if you've got a bigger board, right? Yes, and I guess you can just print slightly bigger, so yeah. it will fit the new board as well. So. Excellent. Yeah. Very simple solution there. I love it. Yep. Uh, Lesto Dante says, here we are. Yep. Let's see. Na uh, 1980 Nameless says, is this being designed intended for the 1990 Milton Bradley Hero Quest or will it be 2021? I think we pretty much know that already. You are yeah. uh, using the classic aesthetic, but how easy it would be to modify it to the modern version if you wished. Right. Probably not much, and we won't do that, but I'm pretty sure that within a week or two, someone will think about that. So they'll just make some perfectly <laughs> yeah. compatible version with the 2021. So. Yeah, somebody somebody like Odanon, uh is, is good about that. You just have your template of like the remake style card and, you, and the classic yeah. style card, and you can copy paste or create all new artwork if you want to. Yes, of course. Oh, yes. Um, Let's see. Will 3D minis be produ produced minis for this expansion? Will the minis look like the artwork in the quest book? I think we pretty much have already answered that. But Yes, and the other thing I can say is that we'll probably be able to have uh, 3D printable rooms and tiles as well. Oh, nice. um, one of our playtesters actually uh, is uh, capable of doing that, and so he did. So we have the models, or we have models for that as well. So we'll just release everything together is uh, if he's fine with that but i think he is so um, for those who have a trade 3d board they will have the files to print uh, the tiles and the rooms as well if they want thanks good question steve rs and lesto dante um and others board game heaven who is shang by the way awesome to have him here gons grim is here great uh thanks everybody for joining us let's see Oh, Steve RS. So I don't know if this is an appropriate question, but it naturally comes to mind. Is there a way to donate some money to help you recoup some of your losses as a thank you for producing these packs? Is that maybe something we should just leave off? And if you want to contact him, you can. Maybe. Yeah, I guess then, I mean, I, uh, I, I'm not the one who spent the most money. I just pretty much both the dreads, but there are some others who put a lot more money in that. Maybe when we are ready with the release, we'll just uh, give the the possibility to, to just offer something back and uh, whatever comes back, we are happy. We feel like mm -hmm. uh, it would be a way for people to show their appreciation for, for our work. But of course, it's not necessary. But if you want to, exactly. it's nice. And we can use the funds to work on uh, on the dwarf pack dwarf quest pack as well so that that's right. gonna be nice because all of us have regular jobs this is you're not uh you're not buying a product from you guys this is not something you're yeah. selling this is something you're making available passion project so yeah yeah exactly uh board game heaven yes yeah, is what we were saying i can guarantee you someone will try to sell it on amazon or wish or timu or aliexpress yeah. happens all the time but like you said uh, luca because it's original artwork you would have a way to uh, stop them and it's certainly the pressure from the community of saying shame on you for basically ripping this off and trying to fool people is not uh, not cool yeah then we don't know if it's gonna work like maybe we we own the art and we are gonna tell the site oh this is our art you can sell it then they just do nothing but at least we can give it a try uh, yeah. that's the idea we we are not happy with uh, someone profiting off of this in general, and especially because we put hundreds and hundreds of hours of work in it ourselves. So 
we feel like if we forfeit our the money we 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 forfeit then why should someone else get those money for for themselves so right yeah and uh yeah it just it just is what it is so um is the choice of color of the wizard quest packs box a reference to the D D boxes and if so the dwarf pack is going to be black says bohemius and no i don't think so uh, we kind of felt that that purple color uh was sort of in line with the wizards of morker and we felt like it felt sort of wizardy i guess so we we, we just liked how it looked like uh, it's like not the final color it may still change i think it will probably stay about the same we also didn't want to uh, pick a color that was already picked for the other expansions so we, we just tried to move around i think the dwarf quest pack might have some sort of uh, uh, yellow brownish uh, kind of tone, sort of like the ogre horde. I, I already have the file for the box, I started to work on it, but it's still in the very early stages, so we'll see. Yep. Um, let's see here. More questions. I know we're uh, we're kind of past our time, but I still want to make sure we address these. Um, Lester Dante says, Barbarian and Elf quest packs are already available for download, but everybody's bought the new editions anyway. Well, there's that. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you make it officially available, you're going to get way more people buying that, and only a small number will download the unofficial version. So yeah, I also think they would be more interested in the newer version anyway compared to this one. Professional oh. backed, yeah, version. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Yeah, the Scaven or Scaven, I call him Scaven from Warhammer. I mean, you've always had rat people, you know, the Nutcracker suite and everything. But yeah, it's kind of a, become a staple of fantasy. Yeah, we, we can't call it Skaven because I think it's probably like a trademark or something. So we call it the Rat Man. Oh, that, be that, careful. That's a good question. So I know there's, this is a whole rabbit trail. There's people out there that believed, and I believed it for a while, this idea that Milton Bradley and Games Workshop had had a rupture, like the two companies had been become rivals instead of friends, and that HeroQuest could no longer include the Games Workshop stuff. But I feel like this project kind of destroys that theory because you were still using official Games Workshop art and models, even at this late stage. Like you were going to have the ogres, you were going to have the, the wizards. Yeah, there was some sort of deal, and uh, we know probably the molds for the miniatures were sent to the US mm -hmm. uh, for the European uh, miniatures, and that's because they had the same base as the European ones. It's just they used the same molds. They didn't make new ones for the North American edition. A little better. Um, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. The plinth is so. Probably they still had some sort of deal that they could still do what they had to do with HeroQuest. Mm -hmm. uh, the interesting thing is that Mike Gray, in his letter to the authors, says, you work on these four packs, there might be more coming. So they there were ideas to develop HeroQuest even more after these four packs. They never did that, uh, of course, but still, mm, there was probably something moving. Uh, in the instructions they give the authors, they tell them to use like generic monsters. So that's probably why we have a rat man and not Skaven. Uh, probably they wanted to avoid problems in general, not necessarily with Games Workshop, maybe with TSR or yeah. whoever else. I wonder if it was just a simply a matter of, well, we've already licensed this dozen characters and monsters and place names, and why pay more money for a whole another set when we've got these ones we can already use and then just use generic for the for the others yeah maybe i mean it, it doesn't have to be uh dracula it can just be a regular vampire so it's yeah it's just easier <clears throat> not godzilla it's just another mutant dinosaur dragon yeah. <laughs> yeah. everyone knows what's that anyway so of yeah. course it's your imagination fine. just converts it automatically very good yeah. uh other comments let's see um was Prophecy of Talor Spirit Queen also based on older stuff? Actually, Lesta Dante answered that. No, Pro Prophecy of Talor was written recently by Stephen Baker. I, I got the impression that Stephen Baker's contributions have all thus far been original. Like he said, oh, I went back to my old uh, 
templates and then I just decided to create something new based on what Avalon Hill is doing now rather than it's not like he had it written already and just dusted it off because it feels very modern. Yeah, 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 yeah I think so. Uh, we also know that there was some contact between Stephen Baker and Mike Gray yes. in the US. That's good. And uh, they, they discussed about mm -hmm. how your quest would become. And, um, but it's, it's probably something completely unrelated. The two teams were moving yeah. in very different directions uh, in the end. Uh, the, um, the authors of the North American Prospects were given copies of uh, the parts of the quest book from the Ogre Horde. Uh, of course, they were given the miniatures, but they were given also the freedom to decide what they wanted to do with it. So uh, there were yeah. sort of no strings attached between the two teams, and uh, they could have developed it differently. We just saw it with the game system. The game system, I wouldn't say it's a totally different game compared to the UK edition, but still it's sort of different. So it's yeah, something like that. I think some some rumors spread online, and there's almost kind of an alternate false history of, of Hero Quest that people just believe without really delving into it. And and again, some of those things I kind of assumed were true until I saw more evidence like this to show that, well, Stephen Baker was not some kind of marginal figure. I mean, he was very influential, and yep. there was a continuity. Even though, yeah, Mike Gray takes over, it's not like he threw Stephen's ideas away. He worked together with him. He talked about it. And they kind of went off in their own direction, but it was fine. I mean, just like Takara uh, in Japan doing their own thing, there was no, it wasn't, wasn't a rivalry. And it wasn't like Games Workshop somehow like nuked the whole thing because this was all publicity for their stuff anyway. I mean, it was a very amicable agreement. And even modern Hero Quest probably wouldn't have happened, according to what I've been told without Games Workshop saying, yes, we're going to sign off on this because we want it to happen too, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I just think it's probably just that the like the project that they were working, they were working on just finished like that. And it seems like there was not much more interest to work on it and they just stopped doing that. But it's not that they uh, fought hard over uh, parts of it or whatever else. Probably it's just... Yeah. easier than we we think yeah because uh because games workshop went back to the drawing board i mean people forget that advanced hero quest came out the same year as the original hero quest and it advanced hero quest included rules saying if you want to use the other box here's some rules for these you know furnitures and and pieces but then it was what 10 years later 1995 you had warhammer quest so Games Workshop still went on their merry way, but uh, Warhammer Quest is still a very different game than either of, of these. It's its own thing. Yeah. But it clearly has those nostalgia vibes. So it's like if you remember Hero Quest, you're like, oh yeah, this kind of reminds me of a game I loved, except it's more advanced, more modern. Yeah, and, that, and probably Hasbro like sort of sold that anyway and probably didn't say anything. I mean, everyone was free to do what they wanted with their their own assets so that, that's just yeah. how it went probably and then you had that gray area that that period of time where the name hero quest was used for other things like gloranthia an rpg yep. that had nothing to do with hero quest you had uh game zone starting to do what became sue quest although that was they bought the rights back so that they had to change it, the name to something else and and all that sort of thing. I, that's another another stream entirely. But let me get to the end of the questions here. And uh, thank you so much for your sure. patience. Uh, get me through this. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, perfect for Christmas. Uh, we talked about the 2024 date. Spellbook. Spellbook? Oh, uh, he's saying that the, the spellbook doubles. Oh, Looking at the number of, oh, uh, that's a good question. So, Luca, in that picture, we see the fire, air, water, and earth spells. Are those duplicates, or is that a sign that the wizard has more of those spells? Uh, they are part of the pack, so he has more. He has more choice. Oh, very nice. We just don't see the other side yet. <laughs> yeah, of course, we, we are not going to show that so soon. It's, it's going to take some time. 
actually I'm, I'm trying to think about uh like an introductory quest sort of like into the northlands to to show some of the assets and to build some hype uh for the release uh we, we'll see if we manage to do that in a short while so That's nice. people can uh, start to know some of the uh, chapters and some of the uh, the new bits some of the new rules we'll see if we can manage yeah i'm sorry to bring up sue quest i know that it's a a lot of people have strong feelings about that um, that's a whole nother topic but but my point was just to say that until a certain year hasbro had basically lost control of most of the parts of hero quest they had to re-secure those rights to the name and everything that's why they sat down with games workshop that's why they talked with chaosium i mean they were basically buying back their share or maybe they didn't have full control of it so in the end they have it all they have the right to it all but that doesn't mean that they can't collaborate with other companies in the future we've seen that they worked hasbro and games workshop worked together on the new talisman um, they worked with Renegade Studios to release the formerly failed <laughs> revamp of HeroScape. So there are, I mean, for all we know, we don't know what's happening in the background. For all we know, they could bring Games Workshop in to say, here's another special Hero Quest thing. Will yeah, they do that? I think everyone would be happy. Yeah. But everyone would be happy. So yeah, <laughs> Let, let's hope they, they do that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I get it, Shang. I just wanted to make that comment because, yeah, some people hear it and they're like, oh, it's a ripoff. I hate it. I'm so mad at those people because there's people that waited 10 years for that thing. I get it. <laughs> I mean, some of it you yeah, could say that was their fault, some wasn't, but I don't want to get into it. No, it's not. But uh, this is why we are not asking for money. We're not saying anything about the release. We, we just want to release it when it's ready. So no one has yeah. to wait for like 10 years or stuff like that. So I'm so glad you guys didn't start a Kickstarter and do all that because that really could have gotten <laughs> gone wrong. I, we've seen it. Before yeah, yeah, so days, good. sadly. Yeah. And then uh, board game heaven Shang says people will shamelessly steal original artwork. Billiam Babel from Inked Adventures had his dungeon cards just copied. Nothing you can do but warn people. I get it, but at the same time, if uh, I mean, we've been told by Avalon Hill, if something is really blatant, they have the full legal right to step in and just shut it down. Especially if they yeah, know they... somebody's trying to make money from it. It's not just, well, I printed this for my friends or my personal use. They, they would probably still be able to do that with, even with our content. Uh, we can do that on our part for those parts that are ours. Uh, then, of course, maybe there will be some uh, shady printer who sells everything. We can't do anything about that, but, yeah. you know, we, 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 we are trying. We, we don't want to get our hands dirty. Then if someone else does, he yeah. face the consequences and whatever else. I mean, we, we, we do this with a pure heart. Then if someone else does it for profit, it's, it's their problem. It's not ours. Yeah, you guys are fans. We're all fans. We appreciate it. I I guess I've always held out hope to say, well, the worst case scenario, if Hasbro did shut it all down, probably the next thing we'd hear about is it's officially coming out for real. And we could at least be hopeful and say, hey, that's what yeah, we, we can <laughs> We can double check if it's the original content or not. So you can yeah. just ask yeah. us yeah. if like, it's oh, actually the, the old pack or not. So we can, well, they we can say that. changed it around right there. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, uh, any closing thoughts? Oh, I, I'm so sorry. There is one last question. Um, well, no, I guess you did answer Luca Rocks. He was asking, what do you think the biggest challenge was? I was going to say the perfectionism, but what would you say was the biggest challenge with this project? Uh, difficult to say, and um, I think probably it's part of that sort of like trying to make it perfect you know trying to balance everything out trying to make the art look just like it should uh, i think we passed like four or five different artists for the um uh, the, the front art uh, and the cars as well because they were good but they were not you know that good they were not fitting the style 
and so we had to change it again and so it was uh, it was difficult also i think none of us is a game designer uh, by by trade and so we do different things and so to, to to be able to do something that okay feels like good enough that it's something that will make the fans happy it's uh, it's the main problem i mean I could probably do something, my own project, and I would just release it like that. If you like it, it's okay. If you don't like it, uh, whatever. But in this case, we can't really afford to, to, to let down the fans. You know, they waited 35 years almost. So. And we, we have to, to make it perfect. But this uh, it's, uh, it takes a long time. And sometimes it's frustrating because things are not moving or not moving as fast as you would want, or you feel like you're almost there, but then there is this thing that is uh, slowing things down and uh, just makes it more difficult. I guess this could be the answer. Well, now that I know that, I, I'm thinking to back being on the forums and not to toot my own horn, but like you guys would be posting and saying, well, we're just it's just about finished. I guess there's nothing else we need to do. And then I would say, oh, well, you misspelled this word. <laughs> Darn it! Now we got to go back. And yeah, no, of course it's, it's gonna happen. But uh, at least if it's a digital release, we can just change a few things, and it's Very just true. going on like that. Oh, oh yeah. But of course, it means that you will have to read everything, and uh, they, they made mistakes. The Hasbro made mistakes, and so I don't think we can really uh, be sure that we are not gonna make mistakes. But still, uh, we hope. They are sort of honest mistakes and that will be forgiven for those mistakes. And it's not something that breaks up the game. So if it's written that you find, uh, I don't know, two lightning bolt tiles and then there's just one, okay, we, we just made a mistake, it's fine. Yeah. We'll just make a, a second edition or a third edition and we'll just fix that, no problem. Which, uh, which official quest pack is it, or qu quizzing your knowledge, uh, where you find a bag of heroic brew? A bag of heroic brew. Is that the elf pack or the barbarian pack? What? Sorry. Uh, normally it'll say like a potion of heroic brew, but it said a bag of heroic brew, like a bag. <laughs> like. Uh... <laughs> I think that was published in the official version. So it's like, well, maybe it is a bag that has heroic brew in it, but. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. Uh, I should check. Uh, but yeah, there are a few things. Uh, a little weird. Some, wow. Yeah, weird. Then I think w one thing that probably uh, people can see is that there, there are comments on the drafts. Some of them are like hilarious. And, oh, yeah. Uh, because there's a bit of a back and forth between the, the editors and the. And so that, that, that it also shows like a bit of the feelings they had when they were yeah. yeah 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 sometimes it was like man we like talk about this a hundred times and i just don't want to go back to this again but uh, <laughs> sometimes it's just uh, you see the frustration and, and everything else i think that's something we we, we we really felt somehow so we discussed about something then three months later someone goes back to that and we're like okay no we did that already so why, why should we discuss it again so yeah very true at, at a certain point you just have to say it's good enough release it and then yeah. two seconds yeah, after yeah. you release it you're gonna find a couple more mistakes but and it's it's okay like that because otherwise you, you'll never get there one thing that they didn't ask but that i'd like to say is that we'll try to release uh, multiple languages of the pack so oh, yeah. uh, there will probably be some translations uh i think italian for sure and uh, probably also um, French, uh, Spanish, probably a uh, couple more German, I think. Uh, so probably, maybe not at the time of release, but shortly after, there should be also localized version of the pack. Excellent. That's so everyone knows uh, you, it will blend with the, uh, the good old hero quest you have. Yeah. Yeah, because we never got uh, other translations of uh, the Elf and Barbarian pack, but maybe we would have if there had been more time and more demand. Well, yep. I, I want to say very big thanks to Luca Pashi for doing this uh, long interview. I know we're late for our next stream, but thank you so much, and thank you to our heroes who showed up. Um, just let me just give you like five more minutes. 
uh, for our heroes, Bohemius, um, Glasgow Gargoyle, and I think I saw Jacer as well. Do you guys have any specific questions for Luca Pashi about the Lost, Lost Quest? No? Well, I, I already asked well, what I... <laughs> Oh, what I wanted to know, but yes, uh, I didn't see in the um, in the photo like a miniature for uh, for a wizard. I see the uh, the four wizard is, is is the miniature of the wizard is still missing, or I mean, it's me that I'm without glasses, I cannot see it. it it's there, me. but it's a bit hidden because we want uh, the, okay. so she, she's a bit shy, so she doesn't want to show. Uh, already, she's there. She's just behind the Minotaur, one of the Minotaurs, but she's there. We have it, and it's based on the original art, as we don't have the free up for the the female wizard. But she's amazing. She's just uh, right. in full eighties, nineties style. We we are very happy with her. It's just that we we we, we don't want to show her already. Did I say your mm -hmm. name wrong this entire time, Luca Paschi? Sort of, but <laughs> it's okay, don't worry. Uh, uh, I know it's, some sounds are, are sort of more difficult for English speakers, so you just uh, you can call me however you like, no problem. I, sorry. I, I hate to say it, but I think of the godfather, uh, Luca Brasi, but maybe that was Brasky. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> no, I, no, I think it, it's Brasi, actually, so Brazi. that's fine. <laughs> oh, okay, so not even close. Well, we appreciate you. Um, any other questions from our heroes there? Yeah, I may have missed this, but um, do we have solo quests for the wizard? Okay. Sorry? Oh, uh, so Glasgow Gargoyle was asking, do we have solo quests for the wizard? Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, it follows the same uh, uh, layout of the other quest packs. This was a request by my gray free soul quest, uh, group quest, and the final double quest. So we're just following the same pattern there because they all fit together in sort of a, um, a whole vision of how the packs would be made. So we just kept them like they were intended to be. Yeah, like you could put all four of these packs together, and so each of the four heroes would have their sort of breaking in period, their special artifacts, their po exclusive potions, and then their super challenging campaigns. Exactly. No Yetis this time, so that's, yeah. that's a good one. I My impression since the Wizard Quest pack has been the focus for so long within the group, I get the impression that the Wizard pack is much more forgiving, and I guess that's nice because the wizard does have all this powerful magic and yet he's like the weakest of the heroes in terms of combat and body points. So him being able to survive those solo packs was a big deal. Yeah, we made it try to make sure uh, make sure, make sure that um like just a, a wise wizard can pass the soul packs. Like he, he has to use all of his wizard the uh, wiseness he has to use his spells in uh, a creative way to pass the packs but it's possible to do that we didn't have too much deaths i guess uh, so we want them to be challenging but not too much very good and then uh, last of all last but not least jacer did you have any question for luca pasky pasky luca <laughs> Maybe Jacer is still driving. <laughs> oh, yeah. He, he comes late to our game sometimes because of his schedule. So, no problem. Well, hey, yeah, if any. at work, so my sound quality is probably going to be horrible, but at least I got the machines turned off. All right. Well, Jacer, if you had a question for him, uh, go, go ahead. I can hear you well enough. No, I, I didn't have a. A question. I just know that it's, I guess, been in the works for a long time. I'm just glad that it's finally like able to be seen. 
So it's more of a comment, but no, I, I don't have any questions on it. It looks good, uh, but I also didn't get a chance to listen to the whole thing. Oh, yeah. Well, don't worry. We'll have the replay uh, coming up on YouTube in about 24 hours. And after this is over, you'll be able to watch the VOD, the video on demand on Twitch. Um, Nameless1980 has a question. I know some of these questions we'll just have to answer later. I'm sorry. But he says, any plans to write new things if this is wildly successful? Well, but this isn't original work, but I don't know. Do you want to try your hand at quest writing after this? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Let's see how it goes. Uh, we'll probably have the dwarf back after this one if uh, it's uh, That'll keep if you it goes well. Yeah, then I don't know. Maybe we'll have to think about that. Um, there are some of us who already make content, original content, like Lesto Dante has made many uh, uh, decks of cards, spells, uh, whatever else. He, he makes them that they are amazing. They are just fitting the, the bill. And that's why he's in charge of the art, because he really knows what he's doing. So nice work uh, he, he managed to find all the artists and he's working with them and he's amazing he's a very very good designer so what the, the things he makes do really fit the game very well so if uh, the, we sort of already do have some original stuff you can look at dante's and you just find everything you need for everything for your hero quest needs so just go there and it's sort of on the same level of quality that we'll have in the pack because he's in he's part of the group so shout out to lester dante okay well guys uh we're gonna wrap then and thank you again for the interview and um i'm just gonna take like a five minute break so to our heroes who've been waiting i'm sorry about the wait i know i said 215 it's uh almost gonna be three o'clock when we get started but uh, we'll be playing uh, Crypt of Perpetual Darkness next, but I will stop the stream here, restart it. We'll do just a quick BRB, and then uh, we'll be back to play. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks. Everybody take care.